Good morning. I am Dr. Shubhshekar Reddy, taking care of NICU and PICUs and complicated pregnancies and perinatal unit. Welcome to the class which we are going to discuss about the fetal distress or non-reassuring status of a fetus. Okay. How we will be seeing these things, we will be recording these things now. To know this, we should understand the rules of life. What are the rules of life? This is the slide one. The rules of life states, you can see these things. The rules of the life says, any baby or any person or any human being or organism to survive on this earth, they should be following these three rules. What are the rules? First thing for any survival organism to survive on the earth, the first rule of the life is adaptability. If you are not going to adapt, you are not going to survive. Only the best adapted fetus will survive because various environments, uterus is like some other environment. In that environment, the baby has to survive. Sometimes there will be decreased blood flow, sometimes there will be an increased blood flow, sometimes there will be sharing of blood flow, sometimes there will be abruption, sometimes there will be seizures for the mother. So the environment will be changing. So if the fetus gets adaptability with that environment, the baby is going to survive. Or in the earth, any organism, in fact any organism, or human being, or animal, anything, okay now, who can adapt will survive. That is the first rule of the life. First rule of life is adaptability. The fetus has to get adapted with the environment. Second thing is the competition. Competition always happens between the microorganisms and human beings. See, the competition will be there in between the species and between species to species. So, the, any, any person on this set who has to survive, first he has to get adapted, followed by that, he has to overcome this competition. Chaos. There will be sudden environmental chaos that will be happening. Suppose in a baby who is there surviving and the, there will be sudden decreased blood flow to the baby or there will be the mother fits or there will be abruption placenta. All these things will be happening. There is sudden chaos. These three rules will be there in the, for survival of any organism on the earth or the baby in the feet, in the uterus. So first thing the baby or fetus or the organism or the animal or human being has to get adapted for the environment. Second thing is the competition. Okay, there will be always competition between the species and species and in between the species and species. Okay. Followed by that, there will be chaos. See, suppose COVID is a chaos. Okay. And the earthquake is a chaos. Tsunami is a chaos. Okay. Well, all these are chaos. There will be certain chaos happening in the environment of the baby also. Okay. So if the baby can overcome the thing, then we will be surviving. Now we'll see, this is a slide showing a trolley problem. Okay, now certain times the obstetrician or the pediatrician or someone dealing with the patients. Some of our days will be in uncertainty. But things has to go in a right way. When the things has to go right way and we are in uncertainty, and when we are facing the uncertainty, then the education, then this... Uh, topics or understanding of the concepts will help us. So we are trying to assess these things. See here this is a trolley problem. This is most common thing. This is first proposed by the contemporary British philosopher. See here if you see that in the track a person has a liver. There are two tracks that is passing. In the one track there is one person who is doing his work. Actually, if left, the train has to go straight. The person is doing sincerely his work in the other track. If the person who is at the liver try to save this per these five persons, he has to deliberately change the position of the track into one person. Obviously, the person who is doing this duty will be losing his life. An uncertainty situation is there with that person who is holding that liver. So certain times our situation should be like this. We are in uncertainty and things have to go certainly in the right way. 
that's where we need to show, show the things any person who want to save this five persons will be shifting the liver to that one person so if that person is a known relative or kith and kin of that person obviously the again the decision will be changing so this is called as a trolley problem from this we will be entering into the fetal distress so fetal distress what we will be knowing all these things a pulse a baby in the environment who is getting adapted with a decreased blood flow or decreased oxygen in the mother environment mother is unable to provide a sufficient amount of the oxygen or blood flow to the baby then how the baby is getting adapted how we are trying to understand to what extent the baby is getting adapted where will the baby be landing in the acidosis or the hypoxia what is the stage where there is decreased where we need to bring out the baby or how to understand that the baby is in acidosis all the attempts that we are doing to understand now is to find out whether the baby is in acidosis or how is the circulation status of the baby this is something like a fetal distress is something like long standing hypoxia see once we will be seeing these all issues okay the fetal distress stress and distress there is a difference between the stress and distress we are labeling this as a fetal distress okay now the stress leading to fetal distress and then the death follows so we are trying to identify where the fetal distress where the baby is landing from stress to distress and distress leading to the death to i know these things we need to know what is hypoxia hypoxemia hypoxemia is decreased to blood flow decreased oxygen in the blood hypoxemia emia means decreased oxygen in the blood or circulation hypoxia when we say the word hypoxia defines that some organ is finding difficulty due to lack of oxygen hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy hypoxic renal failure hypoxic cardiac failure these all things are hypoxia when we say these things anoxia next followed anoxia is extreme low levels of the oxygen and asphyxia complete lack of oxygen so we are trying to know where the baby is baby first it will be in the hypoxemia followed by that hypoxic failures and then the leads to the asphyxic failure so if you want to know all these things how the baby is getting adapted with this chronic hypoxia status to know identify this chronic hypoxia status we are trying to assess what is the baby status whether the baby is in stress extended form of the stress is not but distress and then the death there was a fetal distress where there was little doppler changes and doppler changes there was an algo algo hydramnios further they were called for the assessment of the fetus okay. as a nicu person they were we are invited for the discussion for these things and now we are able to discuss about this baby okay when the baby is in chronic hypoxia what are the changes that is happening in the baby and how to assess this baby is the next topic that we are going to discuss see this is the case scenario that is there and we will be assessing this case scenario this case scenario defines that the mother is in the diabetic and there is a doppler changes that is happening and now we are going to assess and there was a intrauterine and fetal death happened for this baby Okay. Now we will be discussing how to prevent these deaths or how to prevent the intrauterine fetal death, how to assess the fetal hypoxia, fetal acidosis, and what, where we need to intervene. How what are the what are the changes that is happening in the blood flow of the babies, and then how we will be discussing how to deal those cases and counseling too. See, next slide is the slide that is happening here. The, these are all of the same age group. In in between thirty one thirty two weeks, all are on all are in the status of a chronic hypoxia. Chronic hypoxia. In the chronic hypoxia, these babies are getting adapted. Adaptation happening in different forms. Okay now, if we can assess or if we can bring the baby much early before the acidosis happens, we can save the baby. How to know these things? These are all. This is the slide. showing the same fetuses same age group 31 to 30 32 weeks most in and around all are iugr babies all are on chronic hypoxia status the first wave is an intrauterine and fetal death that happened the baby ph was extremely low followed by that there is a neonatal death 
neonatal death where the baby pH at the time of the delivery was somewhere around 6.7 to 6.9, 6.74 and then the baby became on, uh, resuscitation happened but the baby expired in the NICU because of the cardiac status. The myocardium was completely in a failure status and then the neonatal is 7.1 pH who was brought out. The baby was fine doing well in the NICU for a few days the baby needs support and then the baby came out happily. And then with the pH of 7.32 the baby is completely fine. Only observation happened and then the baby went to home happily. See these are all of the same age group but finding out the baby at the different point of the time can save from death to a normal baby. So what is the why, why we are saying it as a fetal distress? We say this is a baby is in fetal distress. We never say as a fetal stress. The extended form of the stress. You see, this is the stress. This is distress. And once it collapses, that is death. So we are labeling as a fetal stress. Stress, chronic hypoxia, baby is in stress, leading to either changes, acidosis, that is fetal distress, and then death. Death happens when the complete increase in the acidosis happens, the baby dies. This is just like a capital and interest. See, this we are comparing with the person who is having completely depth. Okay. The farmer who is in depth, see, the stress forms changes. Here is the stress where the crop has been failure and that leads to distress and the depths increase, collapse and the death happens. If we can help somewhere, this person may survive. Similarly, the baby from the stress to distress, collapse and death. Similar like hypoxemia, hypoxia, anoxia and asphyxia. The stages will be changed. When the baby is in hypoxemia, we should, when the baby is converting into hypoxia, we need to find out. If the baby lands in asphyxia, the baby is landing in the acidosis and death. See, this is how the comparison, why this comparison is so apt is this is the reason. See, if you can find out the stress and distress state, the person may survive and then the person is going to collapse and then the death is following. This is how, when there is an increase in the acidosis, you can see the four babies, the same babies, same age group, same changes. If we left the baby in utero, the monitoring, uh, if we left the baby in utero, the acidosis is building up, this baby may turn up like this. You can see the babies, all these are four babies, same age group. This baby survived with only minimal observation before the landing of acidosis. This baby had mild acidosis, 1.1, 7.2, somewhere. And then the baby was staying in the NICU for a few days and then the baby survived. And this baby almost at the verge of the death, the baby came out where the heart is under the collapse, myocardium is in the failure, where the pH is uh, expansive. When the pH drops less than 6.9, the myocardium is going to be in the failure status. And the other baby is an intrauterine fetal death, severe form of the acidosis leading to the myocardium failure and then death. How to identify where the baby is? See, this is again the comparison. This is stress. The stress is, the baby is in stress. The stress defines the baby has started in a chronic hypoxia. There is minimally, there is minimal acidosis. The stress has extended into the form of the distress. And then there was a collapse. In the death, the exact comparison happened here. Exact comparison. If we can help this baby during the stress and distress period, we can bring the baby out safely. We'll continue in the next session.